Hey guys, this is Mr. Grice for Algebra 2, Unit 3.2 Notes, Day 1. Today we're going to be talking about interval notation. Our learning target today is to be able to write solutions in interval notation for linear inequalities in one variable. Believe me, it's not as bad as it sounds. Okay, so let's make sure your notes are in front of you, your phones are away, and let's get started. Okay. Special shout out to first period in room 325 right now. Hope you're being good for the sub. All right. So the following inequality requires you to use an open point and shade to the left. Well, open point, shade to the left, that is the less than symbol. Now, if we have an open point and we have to shade to the what direction? Yeah. If we have an open point, Sorry, I'm trying to get my blue so I can match this. Open point to shade to the right is greater. Now, if we have a closed point and shade to the left, we use the less than or equal to. And if we have a closed point and shade to the right, it is the greater than or equal to. And what's that rule that we always yell at you about? You have to flip the inequality symbol if you do what? Yeah, if you multiply or divide by a negative, good. Okay, so we've talked about the whole graphing part now what's going to be new today is how to write this in interval notation okay so we're going to introduce two things to you today when we have the open okay if it's less than um or greater than we are going to use parentheses if we are closed, we are going to be using a bracket. So that part you should be pretty familiar with. The rest of it's going to be a little bit interesting. So x is less than 2. Go ahead and graph it. Well, that means we need a number line. We put 2 in the middle, and we go two numbers above and two numbers below. What type of point is that going to be? Is that going to be an open or a closed point? Good, it's open. And since it's less than, we shade to the left. Make sure you have your arrows. OK, so what interval notation does, it's a way to kind of write down what we're seeing in the graph. So I want to know. Where does that graph begin? No, it doesn't begin at 2. It begins all the way. Do, 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 do. Oh, what, what what does that arrow mean? Does it, does it ever have a beginning? Well, it would be 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. Does it ever, does it ever end? Or does it ever begin? Well, it does begin, and we would say that it would begin at negative infinity. Okay? And since we don't know the true number of negative infinity, we would always use an open point for that. So we would say for interval notation that your graph begins at negative infinity, but then it stops. It stops right there at 2. So comma, 2. And since it's open at 2, we use parentheses. Okay, now, hopefully I didn't lose too many of you. And if I did, just stick with it. You'll figure it out. So now for our next one. X is greater than or equal to 2. So we're using the same numbers. 3, 4, 1, 0. This time, are we open or closed to 2? Good. This time we're closed. And then we're going to shade everything to the right. OK, so where does my graph begin? Well, right here, 
I can see the beginning. It's going to be a closed point at 2, but then where does it end? Do we know where it ends? No, it's going to keep going and going and going to a bigger number. And that bigger number is going to be positive infinity. Okay. Next one. We're going to be talking about a positive 1 and 1, 2, 3, negative 2. Okay, now at negative 2, we're open, sorry, and we shade to the left. At 1, I'm closed, and I shade to the right. So this is one of our, yeah, this is one of the ors. So this is going to look just a little bit different because where it begins, oh my gosh, we don't know the exact number. And since we don't know that exact number, we're going to say that that is negative infinity. And then it goes to negative 2. But then there's this nice little break right here. Okay? That's the or part. So when we have that break, there's a union between them. And that's what the U stands for. Okay, so there's a union. And then the graph picks up again at 1. It's a close point at 1. And then it goes all the way to positive infinity. All right, last one, for the example at least. OK, so we've got negative 2, negative 1, there's 0, there's 1. And now when we're looking at this one, at negative 2, it's open. At 1, it's closed. And this is the ones where we shade the middle. OK, those were the graphs we were working on yesterday. And writing the interval notation for this, I can see the exact beginning. It's at negative 2. I can see the end. So that's the beginning, and there's the end. And it ends at 1, and it's closed. So the gist of it is you pretty much just look at the graph, okay? If you it's going all the way to the left, you know that it starts at negative infinity. If it's going all the way to the right, it's going to end at positive infinity. And then you just look at the points to tell you the rest of it, okay? So the only time that we use brackets, the only, only, only time we use brackets is when it's or equal to any qualities. Otherwise, you're going to be using parentheses. OK? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Number one says to solve and graph. And then we have to write our final answer in interval notation. OK. Now, I see that we have to distribute, and I'm going to distribute the negative 5. The 5 goes out front. Negative 5 times n is negative 5n. Negative 5 times negative 8, negative times negative, positive. And there's nothing to do on the right side. OK, next step would be to combine like terms. I'm going to write this in standard form. So I have negative 5n plus 45 is less than negative 25 plus 5n. Now, this is where you get to pick what you want to do. Do you want to move your variables to the left side, or do you want to move the smaller variable? OK. In this case, I'm just going to move the smaller variable. I'm going to move the 5n to the other side. This way, I do not have to divide by a negative. 5 plus 5 gives us 10n. OK. 
I'm going to add the 25 to the other side. 45 plus 25 is... Hopefully you got 70. You guys following along? You using your calculators? And the last thing we're going to do is divide by 10. 70 divided by 10 is 7. Now, is that my answer? 7 is less than n? No. Remember, we need to have the variable first, so we're going to rewrite. So we have n and 7. I look to see who the n equality is pointing at, and it's pointing at the 7. Okay, so as I'm graphing this down here, I am open at 7, and I'm going to shade everything to the right. So, as I zoomed out too far, I have to write that in interval notation. So at 7, which is where I begin, I'm going to use a parentheses, and then it goes all the way and ends at positive infinity. All right. Number two. Go ahead and draw the line down the middle. And let's start solving. We have to distribute on both sides. 8 times 4, we get 32x. 8 times 8 is going to be 64, and their subtraction is still there. On the right side, we need to distribute the 4. So that's going to be 4x minus 12. OK, we need to combine our like terms. 32x minus 64 is less than or equal to 6x minus 12. And now we're going to move the smaller variable. And this time, we're going to move the 6x to the other side. 32 minus 6 is? 26x minus 64. And then I'm just following SADMAP right now. I'm adding 64 to both sides. We get 26x is less than or equal to. What's negative 12 plus 64? Yeah, you should have gotten 52. And then when you divide 26 to both sides, we get that x is less than 2. Now, I like that our graphs are already pre-made. It's one less thing that we have to worry about. So I'm going to go to 2. It's closed. And I'm going to shade everything to the left. OK, and I'm making sure that I have my arrow at the end. So looking at that graph, it begins at negative infinity, but then it stops at 2. And it's a closed point, so I use the bracket. OK, and I'm just getting that by looking at that graph. There's negative infinity. There's 2. This is closed. And the negative infinity is always open. OK. Number three. Now, remember when we're solving these, this is what we just learned yesterday, the compound inequalities. We want to make sure that we do the operations to all three sides. OK, I want to get the M by itself and the M is in the middle. So I'm going to subtract two because I'm following the rules of SADMAP. Nine minus two is seven is less than or equal to 7M which is less than 56. To get the m by itself, I'm going to divide all three sides. 7 divided by 7 is 1, less than or equal to m, which is less than 7 div 56 divided by 7, 8. OK? So I'm just going to rewrite this down here so I don't forget what I'm graphing. Did I write that down right? Yeah. OK. So at neg sorry, positive 1, we are closed. 
at eight we are open and these are the ones that we shade in the middle okay so at one we're closed so that's where we begin and eight is where we end and that's going to be open you guys starting to get hang of it it's not that bad is it okay once again we want to get the variable by itself so we're going to subtract 8 to all three sides 26 minus 8 18 is less than or equal to don't forget that's a negative 3x and then 32 minus 8 oh excuse me don't know if you heard that or not all right 32 minus 8 uh we get 24. okay now that 3 of the x is not by itself so i have to divide that's right by a negative 3. and when we divide by a negative we have to flip the sign so that's what i'm going to do right away we're going to flip write down my variable 18 divided by negative 3 is negative 6. 24 divided by negative 3 is negative 8. now the only thing that's wrong with this is it's not written in order from least to greatest so i need to rewrite this we have the negative 8 the x and the negative 6. Looking at the inequality between the 8 and or the negative 8 and the x, the inequality is pointing at the 8. And then the inequality between the negative 6 and the x, it's pointing at the x, and it's or equal to. Okay? So when we're graphing this, at negative 8, we're open. At negative 6, we are closed. And then we shade the middle. Okay, so I begin at negative 8. The graph ends at negative 6. At negative 8, we're open. And at negative 6, we are closed. Okay, so now we're doing the ors. Just remember when we're doing the ors that we treat each one of these individually. Okay, so I want to get my variables to one side, so I'm going to move the smaller variable. I'm going to add the 10 to both sides. So we get 5 is less than or equal to 1 plus 1m. I'm going to subtract the 1 to the other side, and I get 4 is less than or equal to m. And I want to make sure that the variables first so I rewrite m is greater than or equal to 4. Why don't you guys see if you can solve the other one on your, by yourself? Go ahead and pause the video, and good luck. OK, so I subtracted the m to the, from the right to the left. 5 minus 1 is 4. Subtract 1. Divide by 4, we get m is less than 2. And then I wrote my inequality down in order from least to greatest. This is how we were, this was our final answers yesterday. But remember, now we're going to graph it, okay? So at 2, I'm open, and I shade to the left. At 4, I'm closed, and I shade to the right. All right, so this little break, this is our union, okay? It starts at negative infinity, and it goes to 2, and then it picks back up at 4, and it ends all the way at positive infinity. So when I'm writing this, I use a parentheses for negative infinity, comma 2, where it's open. We have a union, and then at 4, it's closed, and then it goes all the way to positive infinity. All right. 
Last one. Remember to treat each one, each n equality individually. So I'm going to add the 9m to the other side. We get 2 is greater than or equal to 2 plus 10m. I'm going to subtract the 2 to the other side. 2 minus 2 is 0. And then we divide by 10. 0 divided by 10 is 0. And then since the variable is not first, we need to rewrite. So we get m, 0. The n equality is pointing at the m. So I'm going to make sure it is pointing at the m. All right, we'll solve this one together. I'm going to move the smaller variable. So we get 10 is less than 4 plus m. Subtract the 4 to both sides. 10 minus 4 is 6, so we get 6 is less than m. And then once again, we need to rewrite because the variable is not first. And then we get m is greater than 6. OK? So if we were writing it down, m is less than 0 or m is greater than 6. Why don't you guys see if you can pause the video right now and graph and write interval notation. Good luck. Okay, so it was parentheses negative infinity comma zero, and then we were closed. Remember that break means union, and then we are open at six, and it goes to positive infinity. Okay. Well, guys, that's that's it. All right, your homework three point two practice. Up oh, doesn't look like I have all of it, but it's a combination of solving. Uh, interval notations and representing different solutions, and I'm sure there's some solving on there as well. Now, if you have any questions, please come find Ms. Carranza or myself. You know we would love to help you out. Otherwise, this is Mr. Grice signing off for Algebra 2, Unit 3.2 Notes, Day 1. Thanks for watching.